A very good afternoon to you then, and a warm welcome back to the Saxon Ring as we get set for MotoGP action here ahead of the Liquimoli Grand Prix of Germany. Delighted to see the knowledgeable and passionate German fans. They have come back in their droves. A full house packed to the rafters that we expect here for the German Grand Prix tomorrow. And it is hot, baking hot for qualifying action coming up very, very shortly in the company. And myself, Matt Burt, Simon Crayfart in the commentary box with Jack Appleyard down in pit lane. Those umbrellas are needed for the shade. No rain at all predicted for this part of uh, Europe. There's a bit of a heat wave passing through mainland Europe right now. And it's fair to say it's well and truly hit this part of Germany. Conditions up to well over 30 degrees. This morning, it was a truly spectacular performance, a dominant performance by the Catis Pekka Bagnaia. He led the way with a new all-time lap record, a 119.765. Alicia Spargaro, Jack Miller, Gian Zarco, Jorge Martin also in the 119s as well. World champion Fabio Quattararo was six with Juan Mir, Luca Marini, Takanakagami and Maverick Vinales booking their automatic places inside the top 10. Just missing out was the runner-up here last year, Miguel Oliveira all kinds of talk about uh, his future next year. Andrea De Vizioso down in 19th place. And Ea was 18th poor weekend so far for the Italian. And some breaking news to bring you before we get this uh, FP4 session underway. I'm sure we'll see confirmation on our screen very, very shortly. Uh, some unfortunate news. Alex Rins, no great surprise, of course. Two fractures in his left wrist after he was caught up in that unfortunate first corner tangle instigated by Takanakagami, also involving Pekka Bagnaia at the last round in Barcelona. Well, uh, Suzuki confirming, uh, not great surprising news, but uh, Alex Rins uh, will not participate in any further action here at the German Grand Prix. He said, we'll keep working on his recovery and come back in Aston. We wish you well, Alex, and hope you're back strong next week at the Dutch TT. So Michelin slick tyres yesterday with forecast predicted to be around the mid-30s. Ambient temperature for this afternoon's action will be gobsmacked if anybody doesn't go for that uh, asymmetric hard rear tyre. Asymmetric, of course, on the left-hand side to cope with the Pekka Bagnaia yesterday in FP2. Twice he got under Marc Marquez's previous all-time lap record, which seems like a snail's pace right now, doesn't it? The reference we've now got down to Bagnaia this morning at the end of FP3. If you join myself, Lewis Sudderby and Simon Crapar for what was a real scintillating conclusion to that third free practice session, this man found a 1.19.765. He was the first rider in history here at the Saxon Rink to lap in a sub 80 second lap. He was then followed by Alicia Spargo, his teammate Jack Miller, Gian Zarco, and Jorge Martin. Yesterday, Davide Tardozzi, the, the Ducati Lenovo team manager, said this potentially was the toughest week of the Ducati season. Germany, traditionally their bogey circuit, they've not won here since Aussie legend Casey Stoner won here back in 2008. And Aston, we know they struggled there. But on paper, and when you look at what's happened so far this weekend, Simon, that's the bike to beat. <laughs> you wouldn't have uh, picked it coming into this one. That's the thing about this year. It's so hard to predict what's going to happen. Uh, it just shows that Ducati have made good steps forward, even from last year. And, that you know, finally, uh, when I say that, is, you know, the 22 bikes struggled at the beginning of this year. Uh, the, the factory guys run a hybrid between the two. And then, I, I've got to say, coming into this one, I didn't expect the Ducatis to be so strong because here you don't have the re lots of hard braking where Ducatis are so good, their braking stability quite famous, and lots of hard acceleration from slow turns. If you don't have that, they can't use their advantage, but it just shows Ducati have made steps forward in making the bike carry corner speed and turn. Part of that, definitely the riders put it down to uh, how do I say, uh, down to the new fairing, which makes it it's smaller. And they all say it's, uh, because it's smaller, it, it's the bike is less heavy to change from side to side, which was a weak point of theirs, you know, Aston. And then the other, the other uh, difficulty um, is turning, and they've improved that. We've just got to go to uh, this message on screens right now, race direction. We've had a, a few uh, power outages uh, in our commentary box over the course of uh, recent sessions. And the uh, session, as you can see on screens there right now, there's going to be a short delay uh, due to technical reasons. I think we're having some of the power outages also over in pit lane as well. So uh, intermittent power at the moment. That's just the reason why we're getting this FP4 session uh, not going ahead on that schedule as uh, we expected. The start just delayed. Let's hopefully uh, for a short time. Some sad news, as we mentioned. He gave 
gave it a go, and he gave it a real good go, didn't he, to be fair. Alex Rins somehow tackling this real tough, predominantly left-handed Saxon ring circuit with two fractures in his left wrist. The unfortunate news, though, the pain's got too much for Alex. He has decided to withdraw from the remainder of this Grand Prix weekend, and we can hear now uh, exactly the reasons why uh, with Team Suzuki X-Star boss Livio Supo down in pit lane with Jack. Thank you very much, Livio, for joining us. He's just walking into a little bit of shade, as you do right as well. The temperature is soaring in pit lane. A great shame to hear that Alex won't be participating for the remainder of this weekend. Could you just give us the latest on his condition, please? Yeah, after FP3, it was clear that the pain was too much to, to attack, you know? I mean, in, and if he rides, let's say, normal, can manage. But if you need to do a time attack, uh, the pain is too much. So we consider that at the end of the day to insist uh, all weekend uh, with the risk of uh, being uh, even worse in, uh, in Aston was, uh, no mean, had no meaning, so we prefer to stop him and, uh, and, and hopefully for, uh, for Aston would be better. As you say, Aston only six days away now, not a lot of time for that recovery to, yeah, yeah. to really advance. How likely is it that we see him racing at Aston? You know, in Aston would be almost three weeks from the crash, uh, so doctors say that sure we'd be better, so I'm really pleased. We know his potential, he's a world champion, uh, so we look forward for a second part of the season with uh, better results. Thank you very much, Livio. Thank you to you. Yeah, thanks for uh, Livio Supo taking the time there to have a catch up uh, with Jack. So uh, Alex Rins, we just saw there on your screen, confirmation that he has withdrawn uh, from the remainder of this German Grand Prix. He ended the free practice this morning, the three combined practice sessions, 17th place. Yesterday, I've no idea how he did this, a 120.591 with a destroyed left wrist. I mean, you've got to say full respect and full admiration for Alex Simon even turning up to try and ride. Uh, I mean... Uh... I'm not surprised. I think most riders would turn up and try. Um, but the thing that blew me away yesterday was, what did you say, 120.5 yesterday? 120.5. Um, he was right up there with that time, and he was clearly in pain. And I was super impressed because I I'll tell you a little story <laughs> since we've got some time. That, uh, you know, working with riders on track of all different levels for 15 years, you know, instructing it taught me that people, you can't pick it, all have a inbuilt level of self-preservation you know that's what i call it. it because and you can't change that the person can't change it they can make themselves get out there and try but they can't change their uh, inbuilt level of self-preservation and these riders to be a fast rider your that level of self-preservation is really low you know really low <laughs> or you have to, to to risk yourself and push faster and fall off and get back on push you have to have that and a normal riders don't even understand uh, people why people can't, won't follow them they're like what, what's wrong Where, you know and then I started understanding working with normal people that they just they're like you know like they're three steps back from the edge of the Grand Canyon screaming terrified instead of all the riders are standing on the edge going come on just come over here it's fine <laughs> it's like that so but what I've noticed during my career is there's only a small percentage um, of riders that can ride injured just as fast because what happened with me is that once I was injured and I felt the pain and you know you've got a fracture, that pain reminds you you can't afford to fall off and my inbuilt level of self-preservation kick in and just keep me with, you know, from going that last between half and one second, somewhere in there. And Alex clearly hasn't got that. And the thing that blew me away, it's his only a small percentage of riders that can do that. And uh, hats off, Alex is obviously one of them. Super cool. Kevin Schwantz, I've got to mention him. He was the one that... Uh, just stunned me what how he could ride right at the front with, with his hand literally in a cast so yeah amazing they've got talent that uh, mere mortals will struggle to uh, understand and they've certainly got pain thresholds but it got too much unfortunately uh, for alex rins miguel Oliveira, well he's been the talk of the town certainly off the circuit over the last couple of the grand prix confirming in an interview i did with him you can see on their MotoGP social channels on thursday that his pretty long association with both Red Bull and KTM will come to an end at the end of the <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah. Hey, a, a little... Um, oh, apparently we're going to get to see... Uh, no? Audio? Is it? We're going to see something. Yeah, I think we're going to stay quiet and see if we can hear what he's saying. I hope they've warned him that we can hear him. <laughs> He's tuned yeah. into his tunes, isn't he? There, he's yeah. just trying to get himself uh, still concentrated, uh, still in the zone. Quattararo, the world champion, the man who absolutely decimated the field last time out in Barcelona. He was six, uh, the best of the non-Italian bikes this morning. It was a bit of a Ducati romp, both in Friday and so far this morning, with this man as well impressing. Jorge Martin ended 
uh, the combined three free practice sessions. Fifth, he got down to a 119 himself, a 119.969. He's back, isn't he? He's back. You know, with with the front end uh, issue that he's uh, battled with for a few races until, and they found the problem at Catalunya, and he just leapt up the front again, you know, and finished, what, second in the race. Was going to be third, I imagine. Um, He's back, and I totally understand uh, when Paolo Giabatti said, right, we want a bit more time to decide between him and Bastianini who's going to you know, jump into Jack's seat uh, because they want to see Jorge after he's recovered from this wrist operation and you know, found the direction again with his bike and uh, give the, both him and uh, Bastianini a fair chance into August to show what, you know, to make the final decision. And uh, that's going to be interesting. Yeah, Simon, if you join us this morning for FP3, did a cracking interview with Paolo Chibati. I believe. And when you look at Juan Mir's style and Alex Rins' style, it's very different. Like, to, to kind of summarise, Juan Mir's more, in my opinion, a V4 style uh, fired and he's crazy hard on the brakes as hard as anyone in the championship and then gets it turned and whack you know gets on that throttle and I think he'll go really good if he uh, finds a V4 Alex Rins is uh, sits on the on the front of the bike you watch his style which we won't get to see today but think about his style his inner leg his inner thigh is right against the tank he's right up the front his head's by the steering head you know right up the front these two guys ride very different Juan Mir sits a long way back compared to uh, Alex and he actually uses all the knee supports and tank built up to hold him back. That's how he likes it. I think Suzuki have moved the weight. The reason I say that is Helix hasn't been affected.